Okay, well, I guess this is it. I guess it works, maybe. <laughs> maybe I'll test it out. No, I didn't get a browser notification. <sighs> okay. Weird. Well, maybe if I go here, and then I say hello here. Oh, man. Okay. I don't know what to do. I guess. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, is anyone there? Can you type in a message so I can see if a notification pops up? Hey, is anyone there? Can you type in a message so I can see if a notification pops up? Hmm. Okay. Well, um, I guess I'll get started, just in case anyone's there. Uh, no point in wasting more time with this. Okay, so today I'm going to be working... Actually, i got to post to Reddit first. Sorry if someone's there watching. This is going to be a tiny bit boring for a second. Um, so... Stream... I think it's like programming streamers, something like that. Live stream. Uh, dev live stream. I forget what it is. Um, programming live stream credit. There we go. Okay. And I'm live streaming some coding. Do, do, do. Cool. Um, submit a new link. URL. Um, and let's look at what other people posted. Um, so we're going to have something like Linux game development from scratch. So like building our, uh, bi building a web app framework, a Java script web app framework. Okay. 
and we'll post that and add flare I think how do I mark it as finished or not see so that's marked as finished retry um So I need I want to figure out how this <coughs> um, how I can mark this as as done. I guess the moderators will <coughs> will mark it as done maybe I don't know. Um, okay, well I submitted it. It should be there any second. Oh man, you you should okay. It's it is live. Nice, awesome. Oh, I guess they can just tell from like some kind of API. Okay, awesome. So let's get started. So first of all, what are we building? What am I building today? Um, I am going to be building a framework and that framework, uh, that framework is called Remake.js and I have a temporary website for it uh, set up but the documentation isn't built out. Built out. Also, it's not mobile responsive. Kind of embarrassing, um, <clears throat> but that's fine. Uh, so I think in another live streaming, I'm then going to <clears throat> build out this website some more. I already, if if you're interested, I can post the link for for where I, I built out what I have so far of the website. I actually went went through the whole design and and uh, all the steps for building this. It only took like a I think two hours. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. But I have this framework now, and um, it's really cool. It's much different than anything else that's on the market right now. Um, you know, it doesn't require Babel. It doesn't require a lot of setup. Uh, you just add it to your, um, your page, and then the key thing it lets you do is work with data. So you're manipulating data on the page, you know, taking it out of the page, saving it to a database, um, stuff like that. <clears throat> and um, I can tell you like kind of the, the key things about uh, Remake.js. So, um, so our framework is called uh, Remake.js. Let's go and uh, underline that. So <clears throat> the key thing it does is allow you to serialize the DOM uh, into an object uh, for easy saving and uh, for, I don't know, into an object, yeah. So you can uh, save it, save the data, manipulate the data, <coughs> um, and render it again. And um, that might not sound like a lot, but it, it actually is kind of, um, I took a lot of work just to get that far. Um, so let's go let's save this file. Has a description of what it is. And then let's go into a project and get started. So I have this um, <coughs> this new folder called JSTOM test. And that that has a just ignore <laughs> ignore the title. Um, it really shouldn't be called that. We can just call it like remake test. I don't think that messes stuff up, does it? Renaming it? Okay, yeah, it does. So I'll remove that. Okay. So <clears throat> this is just a, a plain node project and we have um, the server JS. This is actually kind of a cool thing right here, ESM. So if you know about like <clears throat> uh, ES6, um, you know, it allows you to do like import and export uh, for modules and that's what this ESM package does is um, basically it, it allows you to um, use import and export in your node project without using like um, <coughs> the MJS extension. I don't know if that's interesting or not. So um, we've got this project and then we've also got another project 
which is the project I built Remake with, uh, or for. And that is called Request Creative, and I don't know why. Oh, I can't find it because <laughs> it's actually named Artisfy 2. Okay, so this is a huge project, and I don't want to like do anything too too big or, or dirty with this. Um, but I think what I'm what I want to do is. Yeah, let's put up some to-dos. So, I'm sorry, this has been, I'm sure, <laughs> quite confusing for anyone who's who's watching so far. Mm. And I also don't know, um, I don't know, I need to like be able to see the chat, you know? So Twitch, I'll just go to Twitch real quick and get the, uh, I think my set in my settings, just so I can like switch to the chat, just just to see if <coughs> anyone comments, because I, I don't know, that'd be kind of nice. So let's go um, here. Oh, shoot, where is it? Live. Here we go. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty quiet here. So we're going to do this activity feed thing, and I think if I open this up, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, can I go here? Okay, cool. So no one's watching. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Uh, new follows, subs, cheers, raids, and host activity here. So, I don't know, what doesn't, is that going to be like a chat? So if I put in like, hi, is that going to show up here? Apparently not. Um, like, what the heck? I just want to get like, Twitch alerts. Twitch Mac alerts. Can you please just show me Mac alerts? Uh, or alerts on my Mac. Um, Twitch chat client. Ah, oh, jeez. I feel like I'm getting a little distracted. Let's see, stream. I've heard about this. Ultimate streamer, stream management made easy. Let's try it. So, uh, activate. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. Themes. Uh, I don't even care. <laughs> Super area. I don't even know. No, I don't care about that. Okay, what can I do? Can you show? I just want chat notifications, please. Um, new development. I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> I broke the site big typing in web development. I really did. Um, I don't even care about any of this. All I want is 
um, something to notify me if I if I get something. Okay, can I disconnect this? Disconnect Twitch. There you go. Settings. No, I don't even care about this. Show secrets. No, thank you. Um, okay. Twitch. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I thought I had... I thought I had a follower. Or not a follower. Someone messaging me. Turns out that's not the case. So sad. Okay, so da 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 da. I'm just gonna hang out until someone comes in here. Um, oh, whoa, I have a I have a viewer. No, I think that's just me. Is that just me? I think that's just me. So um, I should probably. Oh, I have three people. Okay, so I I should probably actually do something. Okay, so I have this framework called Remake JS. It allows you to serialize <coughs> the DOM. Um, so it allows you to turn an element like this. Uh, so if you have a div, and let's turn this into uh, HTML. So if you have a div like this, um, and you want to turn that into data, you're going to do data o type. So it's a data attribute, right? And you're going to say object. And what that's going to do, that's going to, if you use remake with this, it's going to allow you to turn this into this. Just a plain object. Now, if you want this um, object to have keys and values, you can do something like this: um, data key, right? So that's <coughs> meaning that it's a key. Then you can say a name. I'll just use my name here, David. And this will output an object that looks like this. Now, <coughs> this on its own might not seem um, that impressive. But when it comes to like nesting these divs in, inside of each other, you're going to get like a, a nested object, and you can have lists and stuff like that. So I can show you kind of what it's what it looks like. Um, yeah, let's start up the server. So we're going to go into GitHub, and then we're going to go into my uh, main web project. <laughs> which, even though it's called Artify Two, is actually um, <coughs> is actually request creative on the internet. So if you go to requestcreative.com, um, <coughs> you'll be presented with something like this, and uh, yeah, and it lets you like edit the page. <coughs> um, so you can like edit these images, you can edit this text, you can edit this text here. It's a pretty cool little web app, <clears throat> and it's built all using this uh, custom framework. And if I, so I started up the, uh, oh shoot, did I do npm run dev? Oh no, I'm getting an error. Error in style.sass. Node has to not yet support your current environment. This is a new error. This is weird. Um, okay. Um, so let's, uh, I guess, let's. Uh, put this into Google, right? So we'll copy this. See what's up with this. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. <laughs> I hate this. It's so annoying. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, just like how many times you just have to like delete node modules <laughs> and then npm install. 
I was like, oh, that, that fixes it. Um, okay, so if we do this, maybe that'll, maybe that'll help, who knows. Um, nice. People are like, yep, it works. So that's, that makes me hopeful. Do, 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 do. Warning, warning. It's funny when there's like warnings when it's like compiling C++, because I'm like, eh, even if it fails, <laughs> there's nothing I can do, because I don't understand anything about like a build set or C++ or make files or anything like that. I'm a front-end developer. I know JavaScript, some Python. Uh, a lot of like front-end technologies, like templating libraries and um, like even like Ruby templating with like Slim. Like I know my way around Slim. I mean, that's pretty much just HTML though. So a lot of people wouldn't call that programming. Um, okay, I know this is boring. We're just like watching <laughs> this C++ compile. So let me show you like a template in like the real application. <clears throat> so this is like the bundles page. Um, and then for, for like each bundle, so like we have the masthead, we have the header area. If you actually go to request creative right now, you'll be able to see like what the masthead is. I'm sorry, that was disgusting. Um, You'll be able to see what the masthead is, but it's, it's not displayed because I already closed it. Um, but then this is the header area right here, up here, and including this uh, profile image. And then the bundles, one bundle, two bundle, three bundle, four bundle, right? Those are these right here. So this is the actual template for, for this page. Um, and let me go into a bundle, and I'll show you like <coughs> what Remake is actually doing. So yeah, this might be a little confusing at first if you're just like looking at this code um, and you have no idea like what pug is. Um, so pug is a, uh, this like dot pug, it's a, um, it compiles down to HTML. So it's, it's like a Node.js templating, um, <coughs> templating, what do you call it? Template engine. Um, and it basically, like simplify, like this is writing a div with these two classes. So it has like the class of bundle, and it has the class of tour step. And then you can just like write this on one line, and then that's gonna create a div for you that has those classes, and then has all of these attributes. So it's just like a shorter way of writing HTML. <clears throat> and then you don't need any closing tags because it's all, um, it just uses spaces for, you know, con um, saying which what things are inside of which things. Um, so let me see. No chats, man. I think it was on me. I think there's never been someone who's watched this channel. Is it true? There's not anyone here. God damn it. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. I'm gonna keep streaming anyways and pretending like there's people here. So let me just, I, I'm gonna stop explaining the simple stuff and I'm gonna just work. So, and I'm gonna talk through stuff while I work. So, the, the things I wanna do are, um, The first thing I want to do is switch to nunchucks. So we'll say pug to nun nunchucks. And let's go into here. And we've got these templates. We've got pages and partials. And, and we've got pug. And instead of pug, we want uh, nunjucks. So we'll go to getting started. We will copy this. 
Um, <laughs> paste this here and do save. Um, oh shit. What the heck? So I don't even know what's happening here, but I don't really care either. I mean, I do. It would be really nice if I could get this running. Is near death. <laughs> Look at this thing. Um, is near death. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. Okay, so what's happening here? So, okay, let me try deleting this. Delete folder. Yes. And I'm going to do uh, npm install. And while that's happening, I'm going to go into this other app that I have that's called Remake Test. Um, and in order to get this one started, I think I'd just do it's server, right? Yeah, server.js. So we'll do nodemon server.js. And let's go into GitHub. And it looks like things are out of date. This is what the red star means. So we'll go to GitHub. We're going to go to, uh, what is it called? It's called, uh, it was called something else before. Um, uh, something test. JS down test. There we go. Can't find. So we're going to locate it for GitHub, and it's now called remake test. Oh, geez. Come on. This is it. Okay, great. Oh, okay, so I just added some spaces. Okay, so we're going to, uh, we got the server running. And so if I refresh this, we've got the home page. This is cool. So <clears throat> let me explain like what's going on here first. So I'm making a framework, a framework called uh, RemakeJS. And let's do like the overview um, here. So overview is that um, RemakeJS, it handles a lot of things for you automatically. So basically, um, so we'll say RemakeJS overview, and we're going to say, OK. It handles um, rendering your templates with, a, with data, OK? Um, it handles uh, creating routes for your templates. It handles um, serializing the data on the page so it can be saved. It handles um, letting uh, users or people modify the data on the page. Um, <clears throat> so uh, rendering your templates with data, creating routes for your templates, letting people modify the data on the page, uh, serializing the data on the page so it can be saved. Um, <clears throat> we'll say mer handles merging uh, the save data into the user data handles <laughs> user authentication. Although this isn't exact, this isn't strictly true, but we'll ju we're just going to put that. Well, the reason this isn't strictly true is that I'm going to use Passport JS for it. But since I'm going to pre-install Passport JS in the framework and configure all of the pages or whatever, then I guess the framework handles user authentication. Um, and so the big takeaway uh, of, of this is that um, like the main objective, uh, so framework objective, I don't know why I'm repeating that. Um, so the main objective is that, like, what if 
building a web application was as simple as writing a an HTML template. Um, th this is the goal of Remake. So <clears throat> basically, if you could just like, so you see these templates in here, you have um, the pages and then you have like some partials. Uh, partials are just the things that make up the pages and then the pages are, <clears throat> you know, obviously the things that are displayed on the page, like this home page. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's install nunchucks. Okay, okay, so we're installing nunchucks. Um, so yeah, so this gives us like an overview. The problem is, um, I mean, it's not like a huge problem, but we're using pug.js uh, right now, and I would really rather use nunchucks um, because it looks more like HTML. So, uh, you know, because it looks more like HTML, <coughs> it's going to be uh, easier to learn for people, easier to use. Um, and I, I don't know, I just like it. Uh, I'm more comfortable right now with um, Pug, you know, because it's what I've used. So it's going to be a little bit of a, an issue to switch over. But let me first, before we do that, let me go through... Oh, shoot. Is this? Yeah, it's no one. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Property template path of undefined. Okay, maybe that will resolve itself. Okay, so um, let me tell you. So the parts of Remake JS that are built out already, um, it's a lot. Like I've, I've honestly done so much with this. Uh, but let's go into JavaScript. So this is like an old, uh, not an old, old project, but just like an in-progress project. And I have Remake.js in here. It's not installed as like a node module <coughs> yet because it's not a node module yet. I'm still developing it. So it has uh, all these parts to it. It has Hummingbird, Copy Layout, Input.js, Output.js, Parse Data Attributes, Query.js, and uh, Switch.js. The key parts here are uh, Input.js and Output.js. Those are like huge, like especially input.js is just like doing a lot of work here. Like this is all part of the library. It's kind of crazy. And then output.js is these. It's a uh, it's essential, but it's not um, as crazy as input.js is. And if you're wondering like what are these things, input.js is um, you know for handling user input and. Uh, syncing the data into the DOM, and then output.js is for grabbing that data in the DOM and you know pulling it out, basically parsing it, parsing the data. Um, parse data attributes is used by both input and output.js. Query.js is my version of jQuery. This is actually kind of a fun one. <coughs> um, it's very very small, <laughs> as you can see, super 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 small, um, but. <coughs> It's a kind of tiny, tiny bit, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, tiny bit, what do you call it? It's like, it's not actually this small. So it's using this library called delegated events, which is also very small. So it's actually not that much bigger than, than this, like the whole library. Um, <clears throat> but delegated events is like a kilobyte and a half or something. And it just lets you create uh, like simple delegated events um, so you can call like document on and um, yeah so you can see um, I have like this jQuery symbol <coughs> like the dollar sign and when you call it on a selector it returns a new uh, query object and that query object just like gets 
a bunch of objects and then like turns them into an array. Uh, and if it's the first one, it's just going to return. It, you know, if you're asking for the first one, it's just going to return first. You can see like the documentation all up here. The documentation is almost as, as long as the code, which I think is kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> but so like this event delegation comes for free because it's from that other library. But this one is like, hey, get the first element. Hey, get the like get an array of all the buttons on the page. This is like, hey, get the um, <clears throat> like when someone clicks on this element, call this function, uh, event listener, right? This is like a loop through all of the button elements. This is like get the first button element. This is uh, get the 999th, and if it's out of bounds, it's undefined. And then we can attach data, and this is key too. Just being able to attach some data to an element is just really, really nice. And then convert an array like object into an array. I'm just doing dollar sign dot array. And then uh, dollar sign data set data directly on an element. Yeah, so this is useful too because um, we can use it instead of like this. It's just a different API for this stuff. So yeah, pretty cool. So query.js, that's going to be used by input and output.js. And switch.js, I'm actually the, like the most proud of this. It's just a really, really, really nice library. I really like it a lot. Um, it's for switching things on and off on the page, toggling things on and off. I don't know how else to say it. It's a low-level library. Um, it basically lets you treat the DOM like a state, mach state machine, right? And it's, uh, it's really, 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 really sweet. It's a, such a cool library. Um, yeah, it's so cool. Um, so yeah, like if you're like <clears throat> turning on a modal or turning on like an inline edit area or like, you know, activating a, an element somewhere, uh, you're going to use um, switch.js for that. Okay, so let's. Uh, so, this new project I have up here, remake test, what I'm trying to do is do these things. So, this is like, uh, well, I had like a <laughs> uh, add simple or like question mark. Question mark. Um, yeah. Okay. So the the thing is, is like remake supposed to do all these things. It does let you do all these, or no, not this yet. <laughs> Doesn't do very much, does it? No, it really, it does do so much. Um, uh, handles. Um, activating inline and deactivating page elements um, and handles. I mean, this is a lot for a to, for a framework to handle, honestly. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I would like it to handle these things too. So. Yeah, let's go through like what what is this code doing that I have so far. So this is basically like a super simple Express.js app. Like this is a very basic app. I, I have a few extra things in here, um, <coughs> but it's not really like that much beyond a a, um, a sim like a very simple app. Uh, you can see, like, if I if I remove like the last few of he things of here, and I remove like this code block, it would just be like serving like a plain link. Now the thing that this code block does, it's actually kind of cool. So <coughs> we get the directory tree using this dir tree library. We get the directory tree of templates as a uh, JSON um, object, and then we're going to you know, loop through all of the children of the tree, and we're going to find uh, things that uh, everything that's in the uh, pages. So, um, 
So yeah, I think it'd probably be actually <laughs> a little bit helpful for, um, so for us to see what the tree looks like. So if I go uh, here, oh man, oh, so <laughs> the fave icon is, is not working. Um, so I want the, um, No, okay. So what is, uh, oh, this isn't being included in the template. I get it. Okay, so if we go into here, okay. So let's do this um, source, and we're gonna just say main.js, and we'll refresh. Can I read in our HTML? That's fine. So we won't pass anything up. Oh no, I broke the site. Um, okay, so let's see, what is a uh, pages and tree Give data. Oh, I got it. Wait, wait. Cannot read. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So we'll just make uh, like an app container here. Just because it, it, wants, to, <laughs> it wants to have it. Um, so we'll do div uh, data. Oh. Type object. I think that that's fine. It doesn't really even want it. Like it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't even need this. Um, yeah. Okay. So now we have the the tree. So let's um, do a debugger here, and we're gonna see. Come on, dude. Okay. There we go. So we got the debugger. So we're gonna see like what is this tree. Window.tree. Is it? It's not defined, but I set it here. Res.tree. Um, re, Window.tree equals res.tree. Oh, <laughs> that's embarrassing, right? Because uh, I didn't set it. <laughs> I didn't set it yet. Okay. So we we'll refresh this. Um, okay, great. So actually, I don't even need the debugger. Because I'm attaching it to the global object. Okay, so the window. So we got the tree here. So this is, this is cool. So the, all I'm showing you right now is what this directory tree library does. It turns um, a, a directory into a JSON object. So you can actually look up look up directory tree if you want, and I'm, I'll show you what it does. So we're going to pass in you know this rel relative directory dot slash templates, and that's right here, right? And so it's going to turn you know pages and partials and then all of their nested directories into a JSON object. And so let's look at what that looks like. <laughs> so we've got children, we've got the name, we've got the path, we've got the size. Uh, we've got the type, so it's type directory. Then we got children. Now if we go in here, we've got an object that has children, name, path, size, and type. And then in here we've got children, and then <coughs> these ones are directories too. And then in here we've got files, right? So it just, it gives us a really nice, easy way of turning a directory structure into data that we can then work with. <coughs> So 
what we're doing here is we're we're going through all of the children of the top level directory and then we're getting pages right so we're, we're finding the one that's named pages we don't want the partials for this example and then we're getting its children <laughs> and then for each of its children so the children are going to be bundles chosen bundle and home these are the pages right we're going to uh, create an object called uh, page. We're going to set the page name to the um, you know the pages child, right? Uh, so that that name, and <clears throat> then we're going to get the the config path by doing pages child children, and then find, and then we're going to get the file name that's equal to config.json. And then we're going to get the template path. Uh, oh, and then, yeah, sorry. And then we're going to um, get the path from that. So this is just the config path. And then, and then we get the template path. So if I let me show you what, it, what it's representing. It's just representing these two files. So getting this path is just saying, like, hey, where are these two files located? And then we're going to do this thing, config JSON string. So <clears throat> we're not really interested in the path of the config file. We don't really care about that. We, just as like we don't care about the template path. Um, all we really want is what's inside of them, right? So for here, we do the config JSON string. We do await <coughs> uh, read file, and we do path.join, and we join the current directory name to the config path. And we, we read it in as a UTF-8. And then we do a JSON parse on the uh, response. Um, and yeah, these two awaits are, <coughs> are happening after each other, whereas they could be happening at the same time. I'm not going to do that right now because I've never done that before. <laughs> uh, I think it's pretty easy, though, um, to have them do, be done at the same time. I'm not going to worry about that right now because it's really not a big deal. Uh, so we get this config file as JSON, and then we're going to get the route from that. So if I look inside this config file, this gives me the route of this page. So basically, <coughs> all this is doing here is giving us the ability of creating this directory structure with templates, pages, um, and then the pages with the template and the config and the config file and then it's going to down here it's going to say hey match all the paths right so when a user goes to any path in your web application um, you know match it and then uh, hey if the uh, URL path of the current request uh, so if that path name um, matches uh, the route that's in the config, right? So if it matches this one, uh, then <laughs> we've got the template path, which we're going to render with pug. So basically, like, <laughs> like I'm building a framework, right? So this none of this is easy, but basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create it. I'm trying to create a framework that. The, it, it just lets you create a directory structure and then and, and like a config file and then it's going to handle the routing right that's it that's it's very simple i i've just i've never done anything like this before so it's kind of uh hard um okay so bum bum ba what's next um So yeah, let's switch to nun nunjux. So yeah, so let's look in the home directory. So config, see, the route is specified as this. Now the other thing I want to do really quick, eh, it's not really necessary. Do I want to do it? Yeah. So we'll just say uh, title, and we'll say like home, home page. And then um, up here, so we have the config file, we have the 
route. So we'll say let config JSON equal that and then that and then uh, title is going to be title. Um, and that's fine if it's not defined for some pages. <coughs> um, and render file. So we need some data. Uh, yeah. For right now, we're just going to do title. <laughs> title is um, matching page dot title. Okay. Uh, nice. Um, cannot read property template path of undefined uh, main forty three. Do I use this? I do use it. Um, oh. Because <laughs> it's checking for the fave icon too. Isn't that weird? I, that's so weird. Um, okay, so if there's no matching page, then just, I don't know, go next, right? So. I think there's a next here. I'm not sure. So if there's no matching page, go next and return. Okay. So now we're going to do that. Good. Now we don't have an issue. Um, but we still don't have a page title. Oh, and that's because in the template, uh, what is, I think it's just title, right? Title. I don't know how to get. I don't. I don't know how to get the data. Hey, it worked. <laughs> okay, great. So it works. <laughs> okay, so. Um, yeah, let's do this one thing. <laughs> just get, just switch to, um, uh, nun nunchucks. Because I, you know, I, it's something bothers me about Pug. I don't know what it is, but something bothers me about Pug. So let's go here. And I've used it forever, you know? Like, it's not like I haven't used, um, it's not like I haven't used um, nunchucks forever. I, I mean, pug forever. I have. Um, it's just, it, it does get to me. Okay, so render string, render file. Okay. Can I do a relative? Um, uh, okay. I'm not sure if I can just pass in anything there, but hopefully I can. So then we're just going to do um, nunchucks.render instead of pug. So I actually don't need that even with the current <coughs> version, I think. So we're going to do nunchucks.render template path title. Okay, this is going to break it. Refresh. Haha, <laughs> nice. I mean, pretty good, right? Like, I mean, it obviously doesn't understand the pug syntax, but it does its best. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This is actually much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, does it get the title? No, it doesn't get the title. 
Oh, well, of course not, yeah, okay. So <clears throat> here, I think what we can do is do like title, um, title, and you know what? I say I like nunchuck better, but <laughs> I honestly forget it's, um, yeah, oh, it's so simple. It's so nice to just have like curly brace, curly brace. For some reason, it feels so much more natural to me to write that. Um, okay, so the data isn't there. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, wait, wait. Am I not passing in the data? So render template path. I think it's just like this. Um, nunchuck render. I also don't know if this is the right way to do this. I think you can just do this. I think it's just as efficient as anything. Um, so yeah, I guess the question is why is my page title not coming through? Um, if I do like SD here, is that going to work? No. Okay, does it need to be higher on the page? No. Okay, so it's it's not oh it's not putting it yeah, okay. So I thought I, I didn't think I thought maybe I didn't have to have like a valid HTML five <coughs> template because I think Google actually doesn't <coughs> um <coughs> doesn't even like require, like, they don't even strongly encourage, uh, <coughs> like, adding, like, a head area. I don't know, I read that somewhere recently, <coughs> but I don't, I don't really care. Okay, <coughs> so we're going to do this, and uh, let's do the h1 and the main. So we're going to do that, main, and we'll do, like, an h1 here. Uh, home page, exclamation point, h1. <coughs> Let's make sure that this is, um, oh, you know what, Where what is this called, nunchucks? So does this have nunchucks? It doesn't, okay. Install uh, nunchucks, okay. What are we gonna do? Oh, yeah, we don't want pug. I think it's NJK. Um, NJK. Is it, was there something in here? I'm looking for pug. <laughs> yeah, I know there is. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. So we want NJK instead. <sighs> okay. Um, refresh. <gasps> Okay, so I mean, kind of worked. And then if we in here we do title, and do refresh. Oh man, it didn't work. Are you serious? It didn't work. Are you serious right now? Are you sure you don't want to work? You can still change your mind. If you want to work right now, I like won't blame you. It'll be okay. Like we won't. There won't be anything any bad uh, repercussions, computer, if you just start working. Why would the title still be the old title? The HTML5 Herald. Okay, so maybe, oh, you know what it is? You know what it is? So this is crazy, right? But um, no, it's not that, right? Because I changed this file, so it should have refreshed the server. I was thinking it would still have the old um, template cached or something. I don't know. Let's try restarting. <clears throat> yeah, this is annoying. I, I wish that like some paths weren't going to this. Ugh. Okay, well, this is okay, because we're gonna just delete everything that uh, might be causing an issue, <laughs> and we'll recreate it later. You know what I mean? Okay, so, uh, can I do 
I don't know. We'll do it like that. Um, and it works. Nice. And look, the title of the page is home page. So it works. So now we have this like automatically um, rendering thing. Uh, how do I include a partial with nunchucks? So there's like some deal breakers here. Cause like, <laughs> like I said, I'm so used to working with pug. Okay, here we go. Extends. I don't really care about a parent template. I mean, I, it's definitely nice to have, but um, okay. It's got blocks. So, but what about uh, partials? So, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <clears throat> um, eh. I, I really like Pug for some for a lot of things and I've kind of like figured my way around it at this point. So I would prefer not to switch if there's like something in um, <clears throat> something in nunchucks that uh, you know I've come to rely on uh, partials. <coughs> CSS tricks is honestly such a cool site. Okay, so... Um, what are we looking for? I'm looking for... Include. Okay, there we go. So, header and footer. So let's say like, um, I wonder if this will work. <clears throat> I'm really not sure. Um, so let's delete this. Um, let's rename this to uh, like head. Um, and we'll rename this to head.njk. We don't need the starting data thing. <clears throat> and I just want to uh, so we're going to have another new folder, folder and we're going to say it's not really the footer. The footer I think of as where the copyright goes, you know? So this isn't really the footer, it's just like the end. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna call it end. It's a really bad name, and it's, I don't know, not what a lot of people would do, but uh, that's fine. I, like, honestly, this is just my preference, and it's not something that anyone else ever has to do. So here's the thing, I wanna grab this, put this into the head file and then I want to grab this and put this into the end file and then we've got that. Okay, so these should always open up with um, nunchucks. Where's my nun... Where, where did it go? No, I just had it, right? Didn't, oh no, I, did, I never did. Uh, syntax none. Did I? I thought I installed that thing. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. That's fine for now. So, what I want to do is do like this and this. And we'll say like end and head. Um, now here's the thing, we're going to go up one level, up another level, and then into partials, and then into head, and then into, and then index. Yeah, I actually <coughs> screwed that up slightly. So, and, okay. I don't know if this is going to work. 
Um, and if you're wondering what the starting data thing is, that's going to be later. <laughs> okay, so... Oh yeah, this is going to get complicated, right? Because how do... Ah, uh, shoot. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the data that's going to end up in the includes. I mean, there's only one way to find out, right? Just <laughs> save it and try it. It's going to break. Template render error. Template not found. Templates, partials, at, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Because I didn't rename this. That's cool. I mean, it kind of looks like it's trying to do the right thing. So we'll refresh this. <gasps> what? No way did it work. No way did it work. Okay, wait. Index. Okay, what? Homepage one, and let's do this thing, title, and let's change the title that we're passing in from uh, here. So let's say like, bomb page. No, that's a, uh, we'll say like, winner's page. Okay, cool. So, <coughs> um, it's actually working. Isn't that crazy? Is that crazy or is that crazy? Right? Because, so I just included this partial here and that partial there. And then they're like, hey, we have the data that, <laughs> that, that you passed it in, passed in. That's so cool. I actually, I really super appreciate that. Oh, that makes my life so much easier. Okay. That's awesome. So I, I guess I'm gonna just go with that assumption that if you include a file in here, it's gonna get the same data that's been passed to this template. That's cool. Okay, so the next step is these includes should happen automatically. Ugh. <laughs> it's a tough ask, right? Um, so there's two problems here. Uh, and I just wanna brainstorm them. I don't actually wanna like solu solution solutionify them right now. Um, you know, like I don't want to build it out quite yet, but um, so there's two problems. One is that for every page, you're gonna have, um, you know, the, the head and the uh, footer, right? And I want people to be able to have custom heads, right? So like if they want to include like a custom style sheet or, you know, a different format for their title or whatever, <laughs> um, that's totally fine. Um, I want to, you know, support that. Um, so, but I don't want them to have to include those things. Like I don't want them to have to write this, basically. I guess it's not that bad. That's not that bad. It's really not that bad. But what I was thinking is, here, let me just hear me out. So with Pug, the way it worked is you wouldn't just do this. You would, um, you would include it and then you would like render it. So I was thinking with like, if it was pug, you know, I'd include all the partials at the top, right? It'd be like include, you know, blah, 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 right? And then when you want to use it in pug, you do like this, right? And then you, you have to like pass in the data from this page. So like, you know, for example, title. So I was thinking, you know, I put all of the includes at the top no matter which file we're in, so that someone could just use this. <clears throat> uh, 
But now the include means that it's just going to be included here. So I think ideally what I would want is for this to just be like include like head, you know? And then for it to transform into this. Um, so I could do that with like a pretty simple search and replace, you know? So like, I'm, I'm like, <coughs> I have control of the whole process, right? So um, what I could do is I could like search for You know, because like in here, or not here, and here in the main fi file, so like I'm, I'm getting the like template string, and then, you know, I'm getting the file. So I could like get the data from the template path, like I could, I could read in the string. <laughs> and then I could modify the string, and then I could pass it in here. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't know. I think it's fine to just let people have control. Um, I guess I was just kind of thinking it would be kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is fine, just to be explicit. So, yeah, I guess I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, so the other thing is with partials, with other partials. So like head and end, I don't know what end shouldn't be called end. Uh, I don't know, foot, footer? It really shouldn't be called footer because then you're encouraging, you know what? I don't even know if you need this. Do, do you need the closing? body and HTML tags. Uh, I don't know. I, th I think if I don't include them, honestly, I think it's going to be fine. So let's just save that, see what happens. I mean, yeah, it's just like, hey, I'm going to auto-close this for you. Does, does it even show it? I'm not sure. It, no, no, that's a Chrome extension. That's like doing something to the page. That's annoying. Um, so let's go here. and Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so it's just rendering it. It doesn't care about the ending HTML and body. Um, and I'm not even sure... Uh, does it matter? Like, I could have sworn that Google's like, hey, this, <laughs> it's okay to just write this. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's working. Uh, Google recommends um, no, I don't know, HTML tag, uh, something like that. No head tag. I think it was on Hacker News. So Google recommends. Okay, past, it was definitely like the past week, I think. Ah, it's not here. I bet it's on Twitter. <laughs> um, I don't know. This isn't really worth looking up, honestly, because uh, 
That's not going to matter. Okay, whatever. Um, so, I mean, it, it seems like it works. It's not, it doesn't feel like super great to me. So I'm going to just leave this in like that. Um, yeah. Uh, and I don't really like, so I'm going to just say like footer. Um, and then here we'll just say footer. Okay, so let's get back to the other issue. Um, so the other issue is that there's going to be other partials here. And um, <clears throat> they're going to be like things like, like bundle, right? Or like, let's think of another thing. So like to do. Okay, so like a to do um, item is going to have uh, a... a template, and it's also going to have data. Um, let's say starting data. So that's pretty explicit. I like that. So in the, I, I really love that this is just HTML. Oh, it's so nice. So we're going to have like class to do. Um, and then we're going to say like text, like the to do text, right? And then we're going to close that. And this is going to be our template for the to-do. <clears throat> and then for the starting data, what we want to have is like, hey, the text is going to be, um, I don't know, what do we want like our starting to-do to be? Like get milk? It, it, can, it can be like that, right? So the idea is that on the front end, um, so like when you're working with uh, geez. So yeah, so when you're working with remake.js, um, you're going to have like a list of to-dos. Uh, I really wish install Nunjux was working. And right, so I did install it. It's here somewhere. Um, tools. Uh, syntax. It's not. Um, okay. So let, let's save this. I don't know if this is going to work. Quit and open. Um, we have nunchucks now. <laughs> Indeed, we do not. Um, nunchucks sublime. I modified five years ago. Jeez. Um, three years ago. Okay, let's try it. Install none. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, Jeez. This just sucks because, I mean, I don't really care, but I do, you know? <laughs> uh, okay, let's just do, for this stuff, we're just going to open all with... Wait, why can't I do HTML? Why can't I do HTML? What? That was weird. 
Okay. That's that's fine. It's like whatever. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so for remake you're gonna have something like this. Div class <coughs> to do items. Um Let's make some more room. So yeah, so you're gonna have to do items, then we're gonna close that off. And then for this, we're gonna say, um, well, let's say like that it's already, you know, rendered some, <clears throat> you know, so we'll have this and we'll say like, go outside for a walk. Okay, and then down here, we're gonna have like a button and it's gonna um, be like add to do um, and we're gonna say add to do item and the idea is that by clicking this button we want to automatically add a to do to this so we're gonna have something um, like this uh, sorry. So we're gonna have something like this. So we're gonna have like a data attribute that's like, um, you know, I have this written down somewhere. Like I have some notes on this somewhere. Um, so yeah, we called it page put. So here, I'm gonna say data, creating elements with data. Yeah, so this is just an example. The syntax isn't f final, but it'll be like data uh, input new, and then it's gonna say like to do, um, and then it's gonna put it into to do items. <coughs> so the idea is that by clicking this button, a button that has this data input new uh, attribute on it, it's going to look for a partial on the back end that's, that's in a to-do directory. So it's going to look at this index file. It's going to grab its contents, right? So it's going to grab this and insert the starting data. So this is a starting data, text, get milk, right? And it could be nothing, right? You could, you could just have no starting data, right? That's fine too. But it's going to grab the starting data. It's going to insert this starting data into the template. So this is what the HTML that's going to be sent to the front end is going to look like, right? Just like this. And then it's going to send it down. Um, it's going to send it down here, and then it's going to insert it into here. So it's going to say, "Hey, look for um, a class like this." And, uh, okay, boom, we found it. Now enter in this, this new one. And so it's gonna go boom, um, get milk. Right, that was, I think that's <laughs> what it was, right? Yeah, no exclamation point or anything. Okay, so yeah, so that's what it's gonna do. Now the, there's a slight problem with this. Uh, so actually, so first, first let's just think if that makes sense. So, it's gonna send. Um, it's gonna send a request to the backend that says, "Hey, you have a partial that's named to do. Can you please render that with its starting data and send me the results? And I know where to put it. So you know, don't worry about that. I know where to put it. Um, Yeah. So yeah, so if the folders are organized like this, right, if it's just pages and partials, it's going to know, okay, I just look in the partials directory. And then if it's all flat, right, if there's no nested partials, then it's just going to say, no, not footer, no, not head. Yep, to do, we got a match. Okay, go in there, find the index file, the index uh, njk file, render it with the starting dash data JSON file, and then send back the result. And let's say there's no starting data. We'll just render it with some empty data. And um, yeah, if uh, like if the if it's like if it goes back with like this, 
it's like whatever like that that's the <coughs> the developer's mistake um, but we'll be fine with that right okay so um, let's where where were we okay so let's think about this so the problem with this syntax is that what if like you have uh, something as simple as this right you have two to-do lists and this is this is like your to-do list for um, you know home and this is your to-do list for work then this syntax isn't going to work I mean it looks super simple it looks super nice but it's not going to uh, work so something that I um, I thought I, I like implemented in remake before, and I think I shied away from it. But it was it was a syntax like this where it was like um, uh. I don't know. We we just use like a, a random class, right? So like block. So it was like block and then like like this, like some kind of arrow thing. And I know this means something in CSS. <laughs> it's like the direct child um the the direct child. So um we're not going to worry about that yet, but basically what this syntax means is like, hey, first go up to uh, oh, you know what I think the syntax was? It was like this. It was like, to do items, um, and then like, I don't know, in block. <laughs> it's a really stupid syntax. But basically the idea would be you would go up to a container first, and then you would go down into the to-do items. So you would have, you know, blocks surrounding each of these. Um, so, I don't know, it's a decent idea. It's not my favorite. Um, but I'm not sure what else to do. I think I mean, so I so this that option, this option here, I would call it like bouncing up and then down again. So you're bouncing up to block, you're bouncing off of the ceiling, right, of block, and then back in to look for, you know, what you need. Now, is there an, there's another solution. So we'll say um So solution one, uh, bounce off the ceiling. Uh, solution two is find a unique element. You, for example, with an ID. So <clears throat> solution two would be um, <clears throat> attaching like an ID to this. So we would have like ID, like, I don't know, X, Y, Z, right? And then you would have, you could just use this. Now the problem with this is that, let's say you can dynamically create these lists, right? So this is a to-do items list. And let's say this also has, um, a button and 
and it's called to do items list uh, and um, we'll just put it inside of lists add to do items list so that's cool right um, add to do items list uh, so that's cool. So the, what this would do is this would go up to the back end and it would say, hey, I need a partial called to do items list. Um, so it's going to look inside this folder. It's going to get the template. It's going to render it with its starting data. And then it's going to insert it inside of um, this container. Right. So <laughs> this is getting silly. Uh, but we'll do something like this. Oh, I wonder why. Oh, I didn't close that. Okay. <clears throat> so the issue with this is that <clears throat> if I'm dynamically inserting, um, if I'm dynamically inserting these um, to do item list, then how am I going to generate this unique ID, right? I could just have like a spot <coughs> inside of the partial that's populated with a unique ID. Um, and then it just changes, you know, like, like inside the partial, I could have like ID and then I could say like, you know, unique ID. And then I could do the same thing here, right? And so then this unique ID would be equal, would be the same as this unique ID. Um, <clears throat> but I don't like it. It's too cumbersome. It does, and, it, and it exposes this like backend hack to the user. And I just want the user, like when they see their page rendered, it's just, it's exactly the HTML they wrote, you know? Like they don't have to rely on some backend process. You know, all this stuff I'm doing with the partials is just to make things a little bit nicer for people. It's not, um, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's just to make things nicer. It's not that it should be required. Remake.js is a front-end framework. It's not a back-end framework. Okay, so we need a new solution that's gonna work with these dynamically inserted items. Um, so if you're adding new lists, then you know, these buttons still need to be able to keep track. Um, so, I think that, so the balancing solution isn't, isn't too bad. Let's come up with one more solution and then I'm gonna stop for tonight. Um, so, the, other solution what else could we do so we could so, so it's very similar to the bouncing one hmm no let's think of a totally new one so what do I do? Um, currently, so if I go into uh, Remake JS, I have Input JS and Output JS, um, and I have some like watchers. So the rules I have with um, <coughs> with the data for input JS is uh, uh, da, 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 da. rules remake JS um, so I'll say rules objective uh, Framework. Okay. 
So overview, objective, and rules. So the rules I have is like <coughs> um, data syncs up, uh, data flows down into watchers, data syncs up into output attributes, data fl uh, flows down into watchers. Um, that might not make sense. I don't think anyone's watching, but <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then for the save event, I forget how save works. So let's look real quick in uh, da, da, da. views, make sense bundle. So we have a save here, single bundle. So I think, yeah, so whenever there's a sync, um, yeah, so it syncs up, data syncs up into save attributes, uh, into save functions. We'll say. Okay, so data syncs up into output attributes, data syncs up into save functions, data flows down into watchers. Um, so what that means is that like if you modify something on the page, uh, like you click trigger an inline edit area, enter some new data, <coughs> and save it, it's going to look up through the ancestors of the DOM nodes and it's going to find the where the data needs to go and it's going to put it in there and then it's going to say hey is there anyone that's depending on this data and it's going to go back down into all of the children and look for any place it needs to insert its data and and do that so it's um it does, it, ba it bounces, <laughs> it goes boom, boom, it bounces. So that's one way of doing it. I think the only ways I can really think are bouncing or finding uh, ancestor. Um, Or finding a like syncing, find a unique element, for example, with an ID. Yeah. Um, I don't really think there's another way. I mean, okay, so this is kind of cool. This is kind of a cool idea. So, what if? It, it, but it's very, very inefficient. I'm just going to warn. So, but let's say like the this is the style of application we are building all the time. You know, it's just very simple, very short. Um, what we could do is we could climb up to the parent element and then look inside of it for um, for for this selector, <clears throat> right? So immediately we, for this, we'd find it. And then we say, okay, put the to-do in there. But if we didn't find it at that level, you know, so like say there's an extra uh, div here. Um, so if we didn't find it, or wait, no, oh. it was, <laughs> the div would be uh, here. Yeah. So this is like <laughs> some like random thing. Um, I don't even know if you can have a class like that. But so this is like some like random parent element. So you go up to that, you say, hey, are th is there are there any items with to do items in are, are there any elements with the class to do items in here? It says, nope, we didn't find any. Then it goes up to the next one, 
and it says, hey, are there any in here? And it says, yep, we got it. And then you say, oh, okay, that I, then I know that's the one I need to sync into. Now the problem with this solution <coughs> is that um, if you have, if you're writing, you know, HTML with a decent amount of um, elements and classes, uh, what this requires is looping through every time. So you're going up one, looping through all the children, going up again, looping through all the children, up again, looping through all the children. So uh, I, I don't know, like big O notation. Like, I, I mean, I kind of understand it, but I think like this is one of those examples where you're doing like a lot more work than you might have to. Right. I think the bouncing off the ceiling is better. It's less intuitive, to be honest. I think this solution is the most intuitive I've found, where it's just like most of the time, you know, if you're creating to do items, you're not having multiple lists, right? So I think um, I, I forget how I'm doing it. Let's look how I'm doing it in the. Uh, so we have this, um, say, oh, where, where are we doing the save things? Um, bundle actions, move bundle. No, it's the, hmm. App. Okay, let's look for save. Save page data. <laughs> Modules general. General, great. Okay, that makes total sense. Jeez. Um, so, single bundle, page data, whatever. Yeah, it's going to be a bitch. Um, okay, bundle order, new bundle. Here it is. So, we post to the um, bundle new endpoint, we get back some data and then we get the rendered HTML off the data and insert it inside of bundles. Yeah, so we're just, we're looking inside the whole page for like <coughs> the first bundles element Um, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how much I'm doing here. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, man. Okay, so... Um, so there's, yeah, so th this is like the simple example, right? You know, like I'm not really doing that much complicated stuff, even with, you know, this pretty complicated, um, you know, web app right here, right? Like this is, this is not a simple web app, you know, it's a pretty simple. Uh, I'll give you that, but it's not like super, super simple. You know, you have multiple pages, you can edit all of them, you can like expand details here, you can like reorder this timeline, you know, like there's a lot going on here. You can edit this, you can edit the, the price, you can edit like all these, you know, items here. Like it's, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, you can upload images. And this is all... Um, I'm still only, I guess for timeline items, I do have this thing where like I add the timeline item and adds it at the end. And I think for this one, uh, shoot, what am I doing for this one? This would be good to know. So I think save page data, do I have timeline? Uh, I don't, I don't have timeline item. I don't know what I'm doing with this. 
How is this being handled? I'd be curious to know. Definitely. Okay, so it's probably this selector. Okay, so do this. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm doing it all on the front end. Uh, render. Wait, render with data. What is render with data? Oh, okay. Yep, so it actually it does reach out to the uh, to an endpoint to render a template on the back end with some data that I'm passing in from the front end. Which is like, whatever, that's fine. Um, I think, yeah, it would be cool to do that <coughs> with the new framework too. Um, this is crazy that I'm creating a framework around this, uh, like, a, like a full stack framework around this and I'm literally the only person using this. It's a little crazy. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so then I render it, <coughs> I get back the data, I get back the rendered HTML, I get the closest timeline, and then I get the timeline items. So yeah, so this is uh, a bounce, right? So I'm going closest and then query selector. It's a bounce. This is the definition of a bounce. Closest plus query selector. Um, I could even write that here. Uh, I don't know if this is useful. Um, I don't know. Okay, so do this. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's basically a bounce. So, for this one, yeah, so this is a good example of like, you know, with the timeline items that I have, you know, I'm doing a bounce. I'm going up and then back down and adding it to the end of this. Um, so is there a way to, to do that bounce with being a, an asshole about it? So yeah, I think the way I do it is I I think I, I am going to use the, the method that I just um, came up with. Um, so, okay, let me write a simple, uh, so this is like, um, like automatic bounce, <laughs> automatic bounce on every ancestor. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, but let me let me just try to figure it out. So with this solution, what what would I be doing? So like step one would be like get the get the parent element and search it for uh, the selector. Okay, so get the parent element and search it for the selector. Um, if it's not found, go to the next parent element. Okay, and then... Um, so now we just need a way of filtering out what came, what's come before. So I have like a tree, right? So I have like the, um, yeah, 
this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this. Okay, so this is like a DOM tree, right? So these are like, this is like a parent uh, container element up here, and then these are its children, and then these are its children. So say the buttons here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna climb up to this parent, and then we're gonna look at this, and then we're gonna look at this. And then what I wanna say is like, okay, we didn't find it yet, you know, cause let's say it's like, it's way up here, right? So we didn't find it yet. So we need to climb up to the next parent and we're gonna look at this and this, and I need a way of saying, hey, don't look at, don't look inside of this cause we already looked inside of that. Um, so, um, add uh, this parent element to an array and go to the next parent element. Um, search this parent element for the selector, filtering out any elements in the array. That's going to be hard because um, I'm going to be using query selector all. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, let's look at like how deep this is. Like how many parents does this have? So if I do like this parent element, um, parent element, parent element, parent element, parent element, parent element, parent element. Yeah, it takes a while. Um, and if, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, and I'm searching, I'm doing a query selector all on all of them. Um, okay, so let's actually try that. Parent element, or, um, I mean, it's probably not that big of a deal. Uh, that's a little, it's a little bit of a deal. So the thing is, is that the new button is most likely going to be pretty close to the items, right? Uh, get the parent element and search it for the selector. If it's not found, go to the next parent element and search it for the selector. Um, and I think we're just going to say three. This works because um, the new button is most likely pretty close to the list, to the element, uh, to the list. We'll just say to the list, because it's usually a list that we're inserting into. Um, okay. Well. Uh, this was kind of a big fail. I didn't really get it. I, I don't know why I would get any viewers because this is boring. Um, like, I don't really give a lot of context into what I'm doing. What? I have 12 people? 11 people? Are you kidding me? Are there actually people there? Are people actually watching? Hello? Anyone there? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe people have it on in the background or something. Huh. 
Okay, well, um, I don't know. That's kind of cool. People maybe loaded it up or something. Um, okay. I mean, this is pretty, it's pretty cool. Okay, so... Uh, da, 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 da. So this works because the new button is most likely. So yeah, I could see a case where it's not actually close to the list. So actually, like with these bundles here, um, like this <laughs> this new bundle button, I think actually it might be close. Let's see. So we would have to go up to here. Well, actually, I can just do it. Uh, this way. Parent element. Parent element. Yeah, so it's just twice. I just have to go up twice. I think so. Yeah, just twice. And this one only contains the button. So I'm like literally search. I mean, yeah, it's like um, I'm just using like this very similar example of this like single application I built with this framework as like <laughs> the the way to build this out. Um, but yeah, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have to be that way. I don't think it necessarily has to be close to the list, but I think it's pretty likely that it is close to the list. So yeah, I think this is a fine syntax. And then I think you know what what you do eventually for like an enhancement. Uh, like down the line, um, implement the bounce solution as an optimization. Um, so yeah, there's like a lot of things like this that I've been like running into because the thing I wanted I want this framework to do is to be like super super easy for beginners, you know. So like. Like this, the idea that like you can like write a really simple syntax, just like write some HTML, and you're gonna have a web application. That's very compelling to me. So like all you have to learn is HTML. You know what classes are, what CSS is, design your page, and then um, you can build a web application just by knowing like a few data attributes, right? So if you know like this data, I I knew attribute and you know like a few other like basic data attributes um, you, you're gonna be good to go um, yeah so um, so yes yeah, things like this you know like I think it's worth enhancing this down the line but like you know, like we could add um, a syntax here. Yeah, actually, okay, okay, okay. So two two enhancements, I think. One is that we implement the bound solution as an optimization, which is going to look something like like this. So we'll just say like, for example. Data I knew to do to do items, and I don't I don't I really don't know the right syntax for this. Um, like what it you know what it's going to be right. Uh, but for now we'll just add this crappy syntax which is like parentheses and it's going to say in colon and then give a second. Um, you know, context. So this is like the ancestor in which it's inside of. It's a terrible, terrible syntax. Um, so then the, the other enhancement I want to make is like uh, add an option um, for searching the entire page. Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. So, okay. So we already said <laughs> that by that um, that most likely there's just going to be one item, right? So like if you're creating, if you're clicking like new bundle here, um, there's only one list that you're adding the bundle to, right? So why not search the whole page by default, and then if there's more than one list to add it to, 
then you say, oh, okay, I have to use this solution, right? Where I'm going up one level at a time and searching each parent. Um, but as the basic solution, we can say, we'll just say maybe. We'll say like search the entire page for a matching selector and if more than and if more than one is found uh, then continue searching using the incremental approach um, yeah but if one is found uh, we're good, we're in the clear, because we know that there's only one list added to, right? So, if, for example, if you click this button and it says, hey, add a new <coughs> to-do list, uh, to-do items list, uh, and it says do that inside of lists, you search the whole page for, you know, uh, the class lists, and you find only one, right? <coughs> then um, you know that that's where you want to add it in because there's no other place to add it in, <laughs> right? You're going to get there anyways. Um, but if you find more than one, then you have to say, okay, I got to look. Um, and you know what? This is kind of interesting. So <clears throat> I don't know if uh, you know this, but query selector all has this weird way of working where if you do... Um, document uh, body query selector all and what, let's just search for everything <laughs> so I'm pretty sure the way this works and I'm not sure if this is cross browser um, is it's gonna go into um, it's gonna like get the top level element and then go into that and as deep as it can and then it's gonna go like up to the next level and then go as deep into that as it can, and um, and like if it's if it's all the way deep, and then there's siblings, it's gonna go on into all those siblings. Uh, so I'm wondering, can we use that for this? Because like, let's say we go to the top of the. Uh, so okay, let me just show an example of this first. So we have this right, the the. Um, Let's see where this is. So we, yeah, so we have this, right? So tour, top of page, place all there. And then if we go, see, so it's going inside of that first. Now it's, it's done with this, you know, route. It's reached the end of the line. So now for the next one, it's going to go up to the next element, right? And so then if we go to the next one, it's going to be inside of page data, right? So like, look. So go in here, boom, it's inside of page data. Now the next one, see this is going to, has the ability to expand. If we do, uh, wait, that's the one I just clicked on. So if we do this one, it's going to go to the next one. So I'm wondering, can we use this to figure out the closest one to the button, right? Because if we uh, if we click this button, right, and then we go all the way up to the top of the body and we do a query selector all on, you know, the whole page, then the first to-do items we're going to get is this. And then the second one is going to be this. So yeah, so if we did a search for so we would have to do a search for to do items and this data attribute. You know what I'm saying? So and and then the ones and then we would use the current element to match it against to see if one of the elements in our matches match that element. Uh, and then if it did, then the <laughs> then the uh, to do items that's uh, closest to it would would be the match, 
I guess the one that was right before it would be the match. I don't know, that seems a little complicated. But let's try it real quick. So let's go to CodePen. I'm running out of battery because uh, I am streaming. Okay, so let's go to CodePen and create a new pen. And we are going to paste this HTML. Boom, 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 nice. Okay, so now I have this theory. Um, I really like debug view because it makes it not in an iframe. And then I can just play around with it at the console. So if, we, if we're clicking this button here, right, we're gonna have this element um, and this attribute. So let's get that attribute um, up here. Um, and we're, let's get this element in our console. So now if we do dollar sign zero, we're going to have access to this uh, element. And we have this attribute here. So um, we want to do document body query selector all. And we're going to be looking for th uh, this as well as, so we're going to do comma, and we're going to look for anything with, um, what's it doing? So anything with this attribute, uh, which we can get from the current element, right? So when, when we click on the button, we can say, hey, get the data I knew attribute off this guy. So we're going to do um, <coughs> this. Let's put this in single quotes. Eh, let's put it. Let's put it in a template tag. Okay. Um, so now we have the selector for both of those. So we're gonna uh, so we're gonna do the query selector all. So now the first. So th so then we would we would loop through this array, and we we would say, hey, give me the. Um, Give me the element. That matches the current element. So we would just, I don't know, filter it, right? And, and say like element equals, uh, wait, what did I do wrong? Oh, filter, <laughs> not wrong. Yeah, I always forget that. Um, so we'll turn this into an array and filter. Oh wait, what? L equals dollar sign zero. Had to do, that's that button. L element return. Okay, wait, what's going on here? So that gives me those. Oh, <laughs> I'm uh, really bad at programming at 1.30 in the morning, apparently. Yeah, so that would give us this button element. Um, but we wouldn't really do a filter. We would do like, um, we would, you know, find the current element and then we'd get the, the closest element to it that matches this thing here, this uh, tag that's in here. So it would be this one, right? So that would be the one we were looking for. Now, the question is, is do does like Firefox do this? So let's go to like uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia is my favorite site um, to just experiment with. So just go to like the article of the day, Gioacchino. Okay, so we'll do Oh, where's my dev tools? Developer, inspector, that's okay. Okay, so now if we do uh, this one. Oh, no, no. Document, body, query, selector all. And we do star. Um, we've got this. 
So, can you reveal it? Show, can you show it to me? Man, what the heck? I mean, it kind of it looks like it's doing it. Yeah, it looks like it's doing it. But why can't I um, store it as global variable? I mean, I guess. Okay, I guess let's just go into the inspector. So we've got the MW page base and then the MW head base. Okay, so those are the first two. Then we've got uh, content. Okay, and content has children. So we've got top. Top is going to be the first thing in content. Yep, and then we've got site notice. And then central notice, that's going to be inside of site notice. Yeah, okay, so it looks like it's doing that. I wonder if there's like a specification. All order. Yeah. Return a node list containing all of the matching element nodes within the node subtree in document. I don't really know what document order means. Um, okay, well, I gotta go to bed. I think it would work. Um, so let's add this uh, as another solution. Um, Uh, solution alternate alternative solution so use query selector all on the body um, match the results against the currently clicked button um, and we'll say looking for the selector specified by as well as other elements that match the full data attribute, e.g. Um, and what did we have? We had it, didn't we have it here? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do that. Match the results uh, against the currently clicked button. Then get the previous element. Get the first previous element that matches the selector specified by um, this is most likely the list you want to add to because of the way the order that Query selector all returns results. So, um, and we'll just put a note here. This relies on query selector all returning results in the same order for every browser, which I'm not sure. Is the case yet? Okay, cool. So that's all. That's all I've got uh, for tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anyone there, and yeah, I'm gonna try to work on my um, my presentation because I think this was a tiny bit boring of a 
live stream. Um, I think it could be a lot more interesting, especially if I had like an overview of, you know, what, what I'm going to be working on. But if you're curious, you can see like a slight little preview, like a one page preview of RemakeJS at RemakeJS.com. I'm going to be uh, working on RemakeJS a lot more over the coming weeks and uh, hopefully updating this documentation along with that. <clears throat> and the plan is within like uh, by the end of the month or maybe a little bit longer, but hopefully by the end of the month to have a full stack framework um, in which you can use RemakeJS. So it's going to automatically like handle rendering, creating new items for you, syncing the data, uh, maybe having like inline edit components automatically built for you, but it's going to have a lot. It's going to have a lot of stuff. It's going to be a really cool framework. I'm really excited about it. I built a, an entire web application using this framework, and I got to tell you, it is a thousand percent easier than what's out there right now in terms of like, you know, React and Vue and all those frameworks. It's just so much easier to think about um, things this way. So I hope you follow follow along. I um, I'll be on probably a little bit tomorrow too. Uh, have a good night, and thanks for watching. If you're out there.